Hey, Tony, you want to go grab a bite to eat somewhere? You ever tried shawarma? Huh? There's a shawarma joint about two blocks from here. I don't know what it is, but I want to try it. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that away, what are you? A uh, genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. No one says it better than Tony Stark. The witty, arrogant superhero genius, also known as Iron Man, was once the owner of the largest weapons manufacturer worldwide. But when his weapons were used to keep him captive in a cave, he decided to build this. This makeshift suit was the beginning of what would end up being the most technologically advanced piece of machinery ever created. After realizing how ridiculously awesome this suit of armor was, he decided to make the classic Iron Man suit that we all know and love. This suit can reach up to speeds of Mach 8 and is pimped out with almost any weapon that you can imagine. In this suit, there's missiles, lasers, repulsors, an EMP device, a few machine guns, and apparently a stereo system. Agent Romanov, you miss me? What I'm getting at is this suit is way too technologically advanced for us to build today. Or is it? Despite what many may think, it's not the suit that's too advanced for us. It's the fact that the energy requirements for the suit are way out of whack. We already have all of the weapons that are included in the suit apart from the repulsors. So the real challenge would be connecting the weapons to the suit while maintaining enough power for a supercomputer and the ability to use repulsor beams for flight. Flight with the Iron Man suit is difficult to replicate because we do not have the technology yet to provide a stable enough flying suit. The closest superhero flying mechanism that we have is Jetman Yves Rossi. But the trouble with the suit is that it doesn't generate enough thrust to get up to flight altitude. So how much power would it take to run the Iron Man suit, you ask? Tony Stark mentioned that the arc reactor in his heart generates 3 gigawatts of energy per second. That's enough energy to power 3 million homes, and has the same power output as several nuclear power plants. But do we have anything like Iron Man's arc reactor in reality? Well, not really. The trouble with the science of the arc reactor is that he never really explains how it works. A leading theory about the arc reactor is that it is a fusion reactor that is 100% efficient, and it creates its own fullerenes, such as C60, which can be used as fuel by the suit. Even if this were to exist in real life, the extreme temperatures and the amount of space needed to create this amount of energy is pretty much impossible for a mobile suit. But Iron Man doesn't expend all of his energy on the flight and weaponry. He also has Jarvis, which stands for just a rather very intelligent system. And while Jarvis is a very advanced version of artificial intelligence, in reality, the artificial Artificial intelligence that we interact with is like this. Siri, what should I wear today? I would suggest really tight purple jeans, as they are stylish and make your ass look good. It's true. Jarvis is arguably Tony Stark's best friend and it aids him in all of his research, gives him advice during battle, and can control everything that Tony has ever made. And he does this all with a touch of humor. Whatever. In reality, there are thousands of electronics that have the capability of talking to you and controlling electronics in your home, but none of them have yet to develop the self-awareness that Jarvis has. It is projected that self-aware interfaces like Jarvis could be on the market as early as 2023. Anyways, thank you for watching The Element, and how about that shawarma?